The word psychedelic came from a, a researcher in Canada in the 1950s who was having a letter correspondence with the great Aldous Huxley. Uh, Humphrey Osmond coined this word psychedelic from the Greek, meaning to manifest the, uh, the mind itself. This research began back in the 1950s and 1960s with two really interesting clinical groups, one with terminal cancer, where the first results were shown that one experience of a psychedelic called LSD could generate this profound mystical experience and, and produce dramatic reductions in suffering. The other group was with alcoholics, uh, and this experience could serve as an ablation to want to drink. Sadly, really, the research came to a grinding halt in the mid-1970s because of the cultural and, and, and political upheaval that was recreational use of psychedelics. When I started MAPS in 1986, there was no government funding for this research. The research was still completely shut down. We needed to take psychedelics out of the culture wars that they had been in the 1960s with psychedelics as identified as the counterculture, the Vietnam War protesters. We're actually a rare nonprofit in that we're trying to have a product at the end. And that product is MDMA as a prescription medicine, first for PTSD, but then for all sorts of other indications. We chose MDMA for PTSD because MDMA, more than any of the other psychedelics, reduces fear. In our PTSD research, um, we've decided that what we need to do is really work with the hardest cases. Just the thought of a thought about the event of September 11th would have me shed tears. Like a seven-year-old, I would have to leave the room. This conversation doesn't happen. I'm patient zero. It's a three-month process, and there's three sleepovers, and it's double-blinded, which means I could get the placebo or I can get the drug. I got a 50-50 chance. I'm one of 91 people. These are my other savages. <laughs> Light of my life. I'm taking a, a real inventory of my body. How am I doing? What's going on? And I settle into this. I'm starting to feel comfortable, and I realize why I'm there. Um, it's to do some work. But I think I'm there for two or three topics. I go on to learn I'm there for like 13 or 15. But I go into the rabbit hole of September 11th, and uh, I feel nothing. Um, nothing means nothing bad. The drug allowed me to have serious conversations with myself that were not possible before. But it also dropped me on my head. Psychedelic medicine is designed a few interventions to go deep combined with psychotherapy to get at the root of the problem with the goal being to make it so people don't need drugs. These are all the drugs that work primarily on the serotonin 2A receptor. These study results get a lot of positive publicity and people get excited about how helpful these medications might be. I do worry that people will attempt to treat themselves. Um, the, the risks can be much greater. In a, in a non-clinical setting, uh, really all bets are off. The treatment is very effective. The integration was remarkably painful. I saw things I never Seen. I felt things I've never felt. I will tell you I could have used seven sessions, not three. Three was the protocol. Um, I could have used more. I just did 30 years of psychotherapy in four months. 
um, there's going to be some adverse reactions. Our work at NYU has been primarily with psilocybin, which is a, a psychoactive uh, chemical and found in many species of mushrooms. And it, it can produce um, profound states of meaning and, and transcendence. But most every patient I've worked with, at some point reports the sense of love being a part of the experience. That the sense that it's all going to be all right, despite the suffering. This ability to revisit the arc of their life and to resolve past conflicts, to cultivate a sense of forgiveness for themselves or others. Well, I was diagnosed with ovarian cancer in 2010. I said, this is how I'm going to die. But as soon as chemo ended, I started thinking about when is it coming back? And so that feeling just grew, that dread, that terror just grew and grew, and so it was just ruining my life. Every little ache and pain worried me, oh, this is it, this is it. The nurse practitioner said, I have something that might help you. I spoke with the woman who was coordinating the study at length to see if I was qualified for it. A certain number of hours of therapy were required before the drug trial. The study was explained to me as two doses, dose A and dose B, given a month apart. You were guaranteed to get one dose of psilocybin and then one placebo, which was a dose of niacin, and no one knew which was which. So when it was time for my dose A, I was told, bring some things from home. So I brought a little koala bear, a stuffy that I sleep with. <laughs> and I brought a picture of my husband and I when we were married. Lie down on the couch and put on the blindfold and the headset to begin listening to music. At some point after that, I have no concept of how long this took, I was launched into a terrifying space. And it was really obvious to me that this was the genuine thing. This was not a placebo. And I was, I was terrified, I was lost, I was adrift uh, in an empty space. Everything around me just seemed chaotic, maybe like in the hold of a ship rocking in a storm. I think it must have been soon after that, I saw my fear and it was solid like a piece of coal, it was black. It was in my abdomen, not where the cancer was. It was not the cancer, it was the fear that I saw. And it made me furious, I, I was, I was just erupted in fury at this thing that was ruining my life. And I, and I screamed, who do you think you are? Get the hell out. And this anger just, it purged the fear. The fear was gone, disappeared completely, forever, still gone. And then I began to really live in the music. And the music just carried me and I began to feel love at some point. This all-encompassing love, and I only way to describe it is bathed in God's love. And I'm an atheist, but I didn't find any other words to describe this incredible love that I felt. This idea that you could be overwhelmed by material is the case. We need to build the safe containers around what emerges and the focus on the integration. People with, with a history of psychosis or probably with a family history of psychosis could make it dangerous to, to take a drug like, like psilocybin or MDMA. These medicines should not be used outside of these contexts. Um, if and when they are rescheduled, they will be in regulated centers through these therapeutic models, um, not just uh, available in, in a local store. The future of the drug, I don't know if it should be legalized or decriminalized, but it should come with a big fat warning sticker because there will be unintended consequences. But for me, it saved my life. 
experienced a fundamental tectonic shift. A dark guy that was unavailable. Where's dad? He's in bed. He hasn't come out in a few days. That's the best you got of me was appearances. And uh, just don't feel that way. Pretty happy guy.